Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's all good to see all of you today in the house of the Lord. And uh, everybody's looking good today. <laughs> and uh, we want to welcome those who are joining us uh, uh, through live stream. They are uh, our faithful followers of Hope Church. They come every, every Sunday. They go to some church in the morning somewhere, but in the evening say, okay, I want to have the second dose of God's word. And they're there. They're watching us. They're following us. They're worshiping with us. And uh, so the, in one way, they are growing with us. We are kind of um, uh, being connected to this body of Christ worldwide. So with that, before I uh, begin our worship service, is there anyone here wants to give thanks to God and say, I have something to praise God for? Any praise report? Yes, Kevin. My brother-in-law, John, had his prostate taken out on Monday, and thank you all for praying. He's on the road to recovery. They get all the cancer, and so uh, now we just have to heal from the surgery, and he'll be back to normal. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yep. Wow. Anyone else has any praise report? For me waking up another day. Amen. That's a, that is a... Very good reason to give praise God for. Amen. Yeah. You know, we are alive today, yeah. and that's what uh, we are to be thankful to God for. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and also, we want to keep uh, praying for our nation at this uh, time. Of, a lot of uh, things are happening, especially in Memphis. We want to pray God's peace uh, to be there and also comfort to the families family of uh, those um, who've lost their loved ones and, and, uh, and just rest within the community. There's so much of unrest. Uh, I believe there is something that God is calling the nation to, to repent as a, as a nation and turn back to God and give the glory to Him and acknowledge Him as God of our, of our lives, of the world. Uh, and that's where problems come when we don't acknowledge that. So this morning, the scripture also encourages us to do the same, to come back to God. This is about healing for the repentant from Hosea, 14th chapter, verses 1 to, to 9. Hosea, a minor prophet, he called Israel to come back. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for your sins have brought you down. Bring your confessions and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and graciously receive us, so that we may offer you our praises. Assyria cannot save us, nor can our uh, war horses Never again will we say to the idols we have made, you are our gods. No, in you alone do the orphans find mercy. The Lord says, then I will heal you of your faithlessness. My love will know no bounds. For my anger will be gone forever. I will be to Israel like a refreshing dew from heaven. Israel will blossom like the lily. It will send roots deep into the soil like the cedars in Lebanon. Its branches will spread out like beautiful olive trees, as fragrant as the cedars of Lebanon. My people will again live under my shade. They will flourish like grain and blossom like grapevines. They will be as fragrant as the wines of Lebanon. O oh, Israel! Stay away from idols. I am the one who answers your prayers and cares for you. I'm like a tree that is always green. All your fruit comes from me. Let those who are wise understand these things. Let those with discernment listen carefully. The paths of the Lord are true and right, and righteous people live by walking in them. But in those paths, sinners stumble and fall. So are they wise? Are they uh, people who pay attention to God's word today? And here we are. We say, God, here we are. Speak to us. And we turn to you. 
So let's stand up together as we acknowledge uh, our sins and crying out to God for who he is, for his mercy. Dear Heavenly Father, here we are with giving you thanks and giving you praise, Lord. You are filling hope, church, Lord God. And Lord, you are filling our hearts with hope. And uh, uh, our, our joy comes from you, Lord. Our blessings come from you. Uh, the fruit of our labor comes from you. Our healing comes from you. Our, our finances come from you, Lord. Our knowledge and wisdom, everything, our, our very breath comes from you, Lord. So we give you praise and we lift up our voices this morning in one accord, joining the people who are out there uh, uh, via live stream and, and all of us here, Lord God, giving you praise. In Jesus' precious name I pray. And all God's people said... Amen. 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 So John and the team, please lead us. This is a new song. And one of the dichotomous elements of being a Christian is learning how to be peaceful. We know that Christ asks us to be at peace and be harmonious with our neighbors. But he also called us to put on the, uh, the armor of truth and to go out into the world and fight and tear down those places where Satan is working. So that balance between the two sometimes for me is hard, but it also inspires me to know that you can be that person to challenge Satan when he's out there. He's out there. He's in the world. And that's what this song is all about. And so we're going to try to get your blood moving a little bit today. So we're going to have a little introduction by, by Keith on this one. So. We've been deceived by the devil too long. We're gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. What he said was his has been ours all along. We're gonna tear the devil's kingdom down.
Um, let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our God, that you um, created this world for us to live in. You um, sent your son to die upon the cross for our sins and that you're walking with us, Lord. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for the chance to come to worship you, to listen to your word, to um, be felt. And Lord, we want to just praise you and um, open our hearts to what you have for us today. We thank you that at this point in time, we are still free to worship you in our churches. I pray for um, some of the countries that we've been supporting in prayer and intercessing for, for um, India, for China, for some of the Muslim countries. Um, for some reason, Nicaragua sticks in my mind, but I, I'm not sure that was the one we were supposed to be praying for this week. But Lord, just protect those people there that have a faith in you, that come together and... Um, I don't have to worry about coming to Hope Church, Lord. I don't have to worry about who sees me walk in this building and who sees me walk out of this building. Um, but we just pray for that protection for those people in, in those countries. Um, Lord, we think about our missionaries and the different mission projects. We think about the bottle drive that's going to be happening um, to provide funds for... Um, 
crisis pregnancy centers and to buy formula for um, food bank, the food bank, Lord, and we just pray for that offering that you would be speaking to people's hearts. We thank you that um, Roe versus Wade was overturned, Lord, and, and that you will um, provide funds for these crisis pregnancy centers to stay strong, to provide needs for, for people now. Um, Father, we thank you for um, the Shetanises and for their service. And we think about um, their work in the Cameroon. Um, and while they can't be there because of, of COVID and um, the unrest, that we pray for the Christians that are um, in the Cameroon that are working for the water project that's still in in progress there, but most importantly, we pray for um, the integrity project that Tom has been working on and that you've given him to work on, and thank you for the interest in that project. And I pray for Beth Roberts, um, who works with the Sim Health team. Um, I pray that you will be with her as she resettles into um, a new life after caring for um, our mom, and I just pray that um, you will help her as she finds a church and integrates into a church, and I pray for um, the missionaries that she has been working with, um, and that you will continue to work out with it. We thank you for those people that we've been holding up who have been sick. Lord, we pray for mercy that you will continue to um, heal her and Lord for for Keith and for Mike Weinstein um, for Tim we think of um, little Alana the baby um, that has bacterial meningitis that you will um, make the antibiotics work and um, spare her life and Lord I also think of the Clancy family in Duxbury for the people there um, but most especially I pray for Lindsay the the mother who suffered the postpartum um, psychosis that you will make yourself real to her um, thank you um, for sparing her life Lord and um, we don't know why all this happens, but we trust that um, you will work in their lives, Lord. And and not only I think of some of the other mental health issues that we have in our communities, that we will come around those people and protect them. We pray for the upcoming program says we start to plan our year out in the church for some of the programs that we're going to have. I pray for the Cherish Your Spouse series that you will um, work in that um, for our Easter season. Um, we thank you for the class that Wilma taught last week and the, the um, anticipation of another class, Lord. We just thank you for the ways that we can reach out and use some of these methods to share with people. Um, so that we can share about you, about your love for us. And Lord, we just thank you for the rest of this service. I pray that you will be with Pastor um, as he brings um, the message and speak to each one of us and help us to take that word that he has for us today out with us this week. And not only just think about it, but to implement it in our lives, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
tithes that you brought to the Lord. May the Lord bless you and <clears throat> pour out his abundant blessings on, on, on you and, and use these things for God's kingdom. That was a beautiful song, John and uh, Keith. I think maybe we should have Keith do some solos for us. Yeah. <laughs> good job, good job, Keith. You know, that was lovely, beautiful. <clears throat> oh, sorry, okay, yes. <laughs> Amen. I, I know, I think that's getting us, it's kind of moving, right? You know, that's good, good for us. Uh, uh, get our bodies, you know, just do some uh, blood circulation flowing and all, then you're, you're good. Well, we're good to, ha- good to have uh, a Logan with us. Yes. Hey, Logan, and uh, welcome, Logan, and uh, KK's mom, Karen. Uh, they've joined us today. We'll be, we've been praying for uh, how much we miss uh, KK and uh, keep praying for the family. And uh, good to have Logan with us as well. Um, things are moving well uh, in, um, I- I- in January, first month. Lots, uh, lots happening already. And a lot is being planned. I've been talking with the ministry leaders to just to give me some of the events that you're planning to, to God is planning for us through, through, through the teams. So they're giving us, and uh, so we're going to announce all that as we get more and more information. Uh, but for now, uh, just keep up with this uh, regular uh, announcements about Bible times and uh, that is happening every Sunday. Uh, please join them. Uh, and the midweek connect group, uh, I cannot emphasize the, the importance of that particular group because uh, that's where we carry all these burdens and concerns, not only for us, for individuals, for our church, but for the world. We've been praying through different countries. Uh, what was that last Wednesday we prayed for, for Nigeria? Do you know there are a lot of Nigerian Christians live over here too? I've got some good pastor friends of mine uh, uh, he's a Nigerian. I meet with him every once in two weeks. And uh, so, so let's expand our, our, uh, our uh, scope uh, that you can do that through understanding about different countries. And join us this, uh, this Wednesday again at 7 o'clock. Uh, cherish your spouses. I believe, uh, hope you are cherishing your spouses. Uh, keep doing that. That's a good thing. It'll, uh, it'll uh, bless your marriages. Uh, so the next one is coming up uh, this week. Uh, uh, we again um, at um, every Saturday that's coming up. So in February there'll be one. Uh, we'll give you more dates on that. Um, that is February 11th. Here I see the schedule here about your uh, your honor. That's so let's find out what that is all about. Uh, so invite other couples and uh, uh, or follow through this. Um, Videos afterwards uh, through Right Now Media. And then uh, Wellness Workshop. And uh, it was a, a great success last time when we did that, right? We are all... Uh, so I tell Vilma, I'm opening up my medical shop every day when I go out for walking. And, you know, I'm getting my shop opened up. You know, my pharmacy is not closed. So that, that helps you, you know, to uh, get going. So, so I think the next one is what? Make health your hobby. How is that? I love that. So February 18th, that is Saturday, uh, and the following ones you see uh, uh, scheduled as well, March and April. So keep those in mind. Uh, send us an email to Wilma uh, if you're attending so we can plan accordingly. And now the, this is what I want to emphasize. If you are sick or struggling with something, have some concern for somebody, a burden that you're carrying, or some addiction that you want to, to overcome. Uh, we want to pray for you, pray with you. So every s- Sunday after the service is over, I'll be here uh, following the scriptural principle in James 5th chapter. It says, uh, are any of you suffering hardships? Many, right? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should give, sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven as well. So we have the anointing uh, oil. Uh, We'll anoint you with oil and pray for you and with you. 
So meet me after the service is over uh, every Sunday. Hope we would like to make that available for us. All righty. With that, um, let's bring in uh, who do we have today for Chad. Chad, please come read for us from Romans. Amen. 8th chapter, 11, 27. <laughs> Good morning. No pressure, no pressure, just scripture. Anyway, okay, um, I'll be reading Romans chapter 8, verse 11 through 27, and it says, And if the spirit of whom who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifi testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and not co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself would be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. For, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in his hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is not hope at all. We hope for what they already have. I'm sorry, who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through our work wordness groans and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for us the intercedes for God's people according with the will of God <laughs> please join us rise and join us in the preparation song for the sermon
Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we want to glorify your name. Your name is already been glorified through Jesus and Lord as we lift up the name of Jesus around the world again Lord God let your name be glorified we thank you we praise you Lord in Jesus name before you sit down just move up to somebody you have not seen for a long long time maybe and say hello to them and uh, welcome them and let them know that you are praying for them and how are, how are the guys up there they're doing good Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. you you would say good to be seen <laughs> isn't it that good to be seen right we all are we don't want to be to hibernate and uh, and uh, quietly disappear but we want to be seen and heard by the way talking about being heard uh, the tech team is doing some uh, improvising and improving things they've added some uh, some uh, extra gadget here that is to to get your voices too. So next time when you're singing, I tell you, sing in such a way that everything will fall apart. <laughs> in a sense, uh, sing, sing with all your heart. So uh, let's thank the tech team for all that they do, for uh, the things they do and all that, right? So we praise God for that. So let's pray. Bring our thoughts and our minds and our wandering hearts and everything that is concerning to the feet of Jesus, the good shepherd. He will feed us according to his will, the good food, nurturing food. Your soul will be prosperous and your faith will be strengthened. Your bodies will be healed as you come under the cleansing word of God. So here we are, Lord, as we look to you. We are hungry, we are thirsty. Come feed us, satisfy our thirst for you alone. Our souls long after you. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been gradually speaking through uh, the series called the Well Living Well series. So we found out uh, what would really help us to live well. So for the last couple of weeks, I've spoken about cultivating a prayer-filled life. Uh, and the ministry of intercession. But as I was preparing, I came across some of these questions uh, uh, that perhaps some people might be wondering. For some Christians, prayer remains ambiguous. I have questions. We were talk we last prayer Wednesday, we were talking about some questions about that. Like, why should I pray when God already knows what I need? Have you ever felt that way? You know, why should I pray? You know, why waste my time praying? He already knows, right? Or uh, is prayer essential for all Christians or only for people called the, they have the ministry of prayer? Sometimes we think some people have, others don't. But is it essential for everybody? And uh, now the question is, why do Christians suffer? Why do they suffer? Another one is, how can I pray when I don't know how to pray and what to pray? That's a big thing, right? I don't know what to pray, how to pray, then how, how can I pray? And uh, another big question is like, how do I pray when I go through sufferings? Is there any tool or something? some help I can find when in my sufferings. So to seek to answer some of these questions, uh, I've titled this message, The Mystery of Prayer, because any question that is un unanswered about prayer can be under this mystery of prayer. So it's okay to have that kind of ambiguity. You don't need to know everything. 
That's, that's not what God wants us to, to, to know everything about everything. All he wants us to know is one thing, that we know God. The one who knows everything, amen? When you know God, you know everything because he will lead you into the fullness of all that you need to be knowing. So that's what you need to be focusing on. But before I go further, I want to lay out the contrast. The contrast between a life controlled by Satan. Hmm, can Satan control our lives? And a life controlled by the Spirit. Interesting. Who's going to control our lives, right? So the Apostle Paul here, while writing to the Roman Christians, he established one fundamental truth. That is that the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is also living in them. Think of that. The same 2,000 years ago, the Spirit of God that brought Jesus back to life from the grave, the same Spirit is living in me and in you. Isn't that an amazing fact? Do you need to say amen for that? He's there, living in you. So he established that first, talking about this. And the process that Holy Spirit works in individual lives at the time when he was working in the Roman Christians, the process, what I call is the uh, uh, giving birth, new birth, that begins by convicting somebody's sin, convicting somebody they need Christ and God in their lives. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. No one can change your mind. No one can change my mind unless the Holy Spirit does. Amen? So he begins there, convicting me, the need for God, the need for, for my sinful nature. So that he begins that, and then he comes in to live in us. He dwells in us, and then through his power, he will be working in us. So all that is happening by and through in the Holy Spirit. So in, li in light of that, because everything is from him, he is working in us, in our lives. How are we to live? If he's doing everything, is there anything else I need to do? Well, there are certain things we have got to be doing as well. So here, uh, Apostle Paul is laying out this contrast. Well, he's doing something, but I want you to understand what your part would be in this process. That is the contrast here. It is about a life controlled by the sinful nature and by the Holy Spirit. What are they? Are they friends with each other? What do you think? The Holy Spirit and the Satan are the friends? Absolutely not, right? They oppose each other. There is a conflict. They, 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 they don't live in that harmony there. They oppose each other. And these two lives, the life controlled by Satan and the life controlled by the Holy Spirit, when it comes to an end, the end, at the end of the lives, these two would go to two different places. Not, a, not everybody gets to go to heaven. If you live a life controlled by Satan, you will certainly end up in a place that you don't want to end up in. So that the destiny can be also very different. So pay attention to this. How does a life controlled by sinful nature, Satan, uh, how does that look like? This is how it looks like. Before we accepted Jesus, before I gave my life to the Lord and uh, confessed that he was my savior in 1982, like you, everybody else here in this room, before we believe in Jesus, Satan and sin have ruled our lives. We were, what the Bible calls is that we are in the dominion, uh, the kingdom of darkness. We were living in the pow under the power of a tyrant, the, the, the Lord of, the dark Lord, if you will, Satan is controlling that particular life. The power, the dominion. We'll talk more about that in the days to come. But that, that is under the, his grip, his ruling, his controlling. And then you and I, were, uh, we were bidding, doing his bidding, or we are following his commands. We are obeying his voice and doing what he was telling us to do. So that's why... Uh, 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 Paul brings that observation how that is, that is working out in the lives of those uh, those lives are controlled by Satan Galatians 5th chapter 16 to 21 it says so I say walk by the spirit 
and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So that's how it was. But now I want to tell you, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Why? Because for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit, what is contrary to the flesh. They are conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law and he concludes by saying, I warn you as I did before. So there's a warning coming to many of us here. Warning us. God is warning us as he did before. He says, and those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, those who live satisfying the flesh or the sinful desires of their hearts and following the ways of Satan will not enter into the kingdom of God. Are you with me so far? All righty, let's move on. So that's how the life of uh, a life that is controlled by Satan, where it ends up, not in the kingdom of God, but outside the kingdom of God. But what is the future for those who believe in Jesus, whose lives are controlled by Satan, uh, controlled by the Holy Spirit? That is, they've got a much brighter future, much beautiful future. Uh, that is, it says, uh, Colossians 1st chapter 13 and 14. He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. So that is the, the purchase took place. Uh, the transfer happened when we believed in Christ. He moved us from the do dominion of darkness into the kingdom of, the, of light, uh, the God's son, Lord Jesus Christ. Who is controlling your life? All those who are listening, who is controlling your life? Is it the Holy Spirit or is it Satan and the sin that is controlling you? So coming, uh, coming to this remedy, remedy, remedial part of this sermon, how can I overcome sin? How could I uh, move on uh, from sin? Well, we can overcome our sinful nature by being led by the Holy Spirit daily. Verses 14 and 15, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's Spirit when he adopted you as his sons, uh, as his own children, I would say, as his sons and daughters. So now you call him Abba. Father, Abba, Father. Oh, that's a beautiful way to relate to God. I'll, I'll explain that. When we are born again, when I gave my life to the Lord, I've been adopted into God's kingdom. God became my father. And I bought, I've been brought into the family of God. And I became the heir of Christ, co-heir with Christ. And you and I, all those who have believed in Christ, have the same position with God, in God, before God. That is, you are his son and you are his daughter. Do you say amen for that? Amen. You are his son and it's wonderful to have God being, God is your father, I tell you. You know, I would rather have him than the devil as my father. But he is the one that we would look to him. He's our father. So Abba, father, this very affectionate term has been a, a, a notable, one of the notable names of God in understanding how he relates to people, to you and me. The word Abba uh, in uh, Aramaic means father. And it was a, uh, a common term that expressed affection and confidence and faith. Uh, Abba signifies the close, intimate relationship between a father and his child, and the childlike trust that young child puts in his, in his uh, papa. Or, what would you say? Dad? Daddy. Like, you know, Papa or Daddy. You know, I love my girls when they call me Papa. You know, I said, oh, call me one more time. <laughs> but don't call me to give you some money or anything. But call me <laughs> one more time, Papa, right? I love that. Amen. Amen, yes. There is something come to God, you know, Papa, when we come to him. So his spirits, it says, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. 
So there is the affirmation taking place right now in your heart, in my heart. If you believe in Jesus, he's affirming you. You are God's child. You are the son and the daughter of the most high God. So let's, let's thank God for that. Let's put our hands together, give praise to the Lord, say, God, I am your child. You are my father. And I fear no evil. God is on our side. And we're moving forward into that, with that affirmation. But here comes living in this world, though all that is true what I've said, God, even God's children, God's people, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit go through certain hardships and some struggles. We will look into that right now. It says, have you heard this uh, question? A lot of people would say, uh, uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Have you heard that one? Yeah. Right? Why do? But you know, they, say, they don't ask this one. Why do good things happen to bad people? <laughs> why don't they ask that, right? So because when something bad happens, they want to find somebody to blame. Exactly. So they say, why God, if God is, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? A lot of people come up with some unhelpful cliches, somehow like this. God will never give me what I can, can't handle. Or some say, that which doesn't kill me makes me stronger. <laughs> well, you can justify, try to work through, work your way around. Uh, and some blame God, uh, when God when bad things happen. But you know what? Bad things will happen. Jesus had warned us about that. We're going to live in a world that is going to be full of trouble, right? A lot of trouble in this world. That's what Jesus said. Uh, it's going to be a lot of trouble, but I want you to take heart. I have overcome the world. In other words, I can overcome the trouble, whatever the trouble that is you're having. So that's the assurance God gives us. But let's talk a little bit more. Why do God's children seem to suffer much more than the wicked and the evil, right? Sometimes it looks like everybody's, they're having such great fun. I'm the child of God. I'm following Christ. I'm going to church. I give my tithes. I read my Bible. I pray every day. Why do I suffer? Why do I go through what I'm going through? We don't understand. I think Margaret was praying sometimes. Some of why do these things happen to us? We don't understand. But Paul gives us a few reasons for us from the Rome, book of Romans, 8th uh, uh, chapter, verse 20 to 25. I'd like to re lay out what actually causes uh, suffering. Why suffering in the first place? First of all, no matter who you are, you are a, whether you are a righteous person or a wicked person, everybody, we all suffer because we are living in a fallen world. Amen? We all suffer here. You know, if, uh, if snow hits, it says, oh, this is Hope Church, let's spare. Let's, they don't have budget, enough budget here to take care of that. So we'll skip Hope Church. No, right? Tom, did, did that happen to us anytime? Yes. Oh, you did, right? Sometimes that's, uh, that is when, we, when it doesn't snow, right? <laughs> but if it hits it, everybody, it's, with the sunshine, it shines on the wicked and the righteous, right? The same way principle here. We are living in this fallen world. And the, the Bible tells us the whole creation is subjected to God's curse and eagerly looking forward to the day it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. From the time of Adam, God cursed the land. You know, from that point onwards until now, even going forward till that day when God finally redeems, the world is under that that curse, and you've been uh, um, uh, subject to groaning, it says. Uh, that's the reason why we go through the suffering of, uh, uh, of uh, natural calamities. Talk about the tornadoes, or the, the uh, what do you call, extreme weather conditions these days, or uh, extreme uh, uh, earthquakes, or the famine, and so on and so forth. We all can be impacted by those things. Amen? Some are more than the other, but everybody will go through. Secondly, why do we suffer? Because we suffer because of our own sin. I, or my own wrong choices that I make. 
I, the, uh, I abused my body, and then you pay for it if you abuse your body, right? That is, it is on you, it's on me that I, I need to be taking good care of myself, you know, like overeating or, drink, or over drinking or partying or committing adultery and uh, our addiction to drugs. These things, we, we, we our own sin could cause us to go through that kind of suffering. But that's not all it. There is something other people sin, people, other people commit violent acts or they commit sinful acts or unjust things they do and then we suffer because of, of, of them. You know, like the, the, silent, the gun violence, for example. You know, like the, some, sometimes the community uh, uh, suffers. So it's not only the sins of mine, but the sins of others could make me suffer. Thirdly, this is where we can take some consolation from. God's children, they may and they will, sometimes they may, in most cases, may endure much more suffering because we inherit suffering along with blessings. Amen? Amen? How, many, how many of you would like to be, would like to, the, would like the glory? Say, uh, do you want the glory of God? You want the glory? Come on, let's see. How many of you want to say, I want the glory, right? Well, I know sometimes you get the glory through suffering. How so? It's the, it's the, it is the, it doesn't make sense, right? It looks like a contradiction, but how can be that? So that's what the word of God tells us here uh, in, um, because we inherit not only the blessings of God, but also we inherit the suffering uh, uh, of uh, what Christ has endured in our own lives. So verse 23, it says here, and we believers also groan even though we are, uh, let me see, uh, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, uh, we too long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies, he has promised us. Isn't that wonderful? God has promised a new body. You know, not a new pacemaker. <laughs> you know, a totally new heart. Amen? And not a new set of glasses that I'm going to have there And when I go to heaven. I tell you, I'll just throw it out through the window. Not yet. But when I come there, I don't need my, my vision. Everything will be restored. The new body that I'm going to get. Amen. Joe, Jose is excited about that. How many of you want new bodies? You know, God is going to give us that body. That's what the, that is the hope I find here. He says he has promised us. I tell you, God would never go back on his promises. Amen. He will fulfill his promises. But now here on earth, how do I link our sufferings to the glory of God. Somehow there is a connection of our present sufferings are linked with our sharing in God's glory. You know, we will wait eagerly for God's glory to be revealed, but in the meantime, suffering is happening all over. I, uh, many American Christians don't fully understand how the rest of the world is suffering because they are followers of Christ. They're following Jesus, right, Jose? What do you think so, right? You know, a lot of people are suffering, but we in America, we freely come to church, we go and do, no one does anything to us, but it's not the same with many people. Let me pull out some uh, statistics over here. Uh, in 2021, very recently, 5,110 churches or Christian buildings were attacked. These are some of the worldwide figures, these are coming. And 6,175 Christians were detained without trial, arrested, sentenced, or imprisoned. Around the world, more than 360 million Christians live in places where they experience persecution just for following Jesus. And that is like one in seven believers. It says here, uh, an average of 16 Christians are killed 
each day because of their faith. The numbers may be even more, but before the end, before the day is over, our brothers and sisters who profess Christ, 16, 16 of them will enter the glory of God. Uh, that's how I would like to look at, because they will be martyred. They, they are given up, they, give, they took a stand for Christ. You know, I'm so blessed by reading this um, uh, testimony of this um, man, by the name, his, his name is Abdul. He's an imam in Bangladesh. I, I, imam is like a priest. And then uh, somehow the gospel came to him. And then he began to read about the Bible and then began to believe in Jesus. And he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And all trouble broke loose. Everybody wanted to kill him in that town because he betrayed their religion. And they came to, they, they beat him up. They broke two of his legs. And yet he was standing for the Lord. And his captors came and said, deny Christ, otherwise we'll kill you. They put knife to him. And you know what he said? Jesus Christ is in my heart. How could I take him out of my heart? Amen. You can, do, you can do all that to my body and all that, but he's there inside of me. That never can be taken away from me. Do you say hallelujah for that? There are many who are standing for the faith in, in God and stay, going through persecution. How are we suffer? How are we? What are we identifying with their sufferings? Are we? Well, we have our own complaints to give. You know what are our own complaints? Because my internet is not so fast enough to download all this junk. That's my distress. But the people are going through all kinds of struggles here. You know, I want to encourage you to read these stories. There are many in Bangladesh, in Somalia, in Nigeria, in Africa, and in India. And let, let this speak to us. How they are, they somehow their suffering is translating them into glory of God. That's what happens when we come into uh, 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 in, in, to understand this uh, in, in, a, in a different way. Your suffering, my suffering, somehow linked with the glory that you want to receive in the future. But while you're here, when you're going through suffering, does God will just uh, sit and do nothing about it? What, what uh, arrangements did he make for us? What provision did he give us? Well, we'll find out. That is, uh, that is in the mystery of prayer. Verse 26, let's look at this. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. It says, for example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Something is happening here. The Holy Spirit is in you, is getting involved in your suffering. I want to share a few thoughts. I've already touched on that about suffering. Let me share a little pers from a personal point of view and um, just to give us some uh, background. No one fakes or lies about their suffering. Amen? No one lies about their suffering. There's not, nothing about faking about their suffering. You know, like, uh, um, uh, like this uh, uh, conspiracy radio host accused of the families uh, just doing that, faking their pain, faking the losing of their child in the Sandy Hook Elementary sh School shooting. Who would say, who would lie about, I've lost my child? Right? No one lies about that. No one. Number two, all suffering, whatever the form of suffering you are going through, is very real. Amen? It's real, it's personal. And only your heart knows the, its intensity. May it be emotional suffering, physical suffering, or, or mental suffering, agony, or conflict within the family, within the marriage, or divorce, or whatever that you're going through, your heart knows it. 
because it touches you so personally. I can say anything from outside, but only your heart knows its own agony and its pain. How do individuals cope with suffering and how do communities rightly respond to suffering? That's one thing we need to, it, again, different way, we want to cope with, cope, cope with suffering differently. But for God's children, that's my concern at the moment, for God's children, is there help? As there is help in my vulnerable moments, in your vulnerable and weak moments, that the rest of the world do not have. That help, they don't have that kind of help as much as you and I have that. How so? That's what the Holy Spirit is doing in you because of you and uh, I are the children of God. You've got an extra layer of protection. Amen? Extra layer of comfort, extra layer of, uh, of grace that the rest of the world do not have. All that be made possible because you have a different position. You are in the family of God. And this is what the Spirit says here. Our Heavenly Father knows what's going on in my heart and, and in, your, in your heart. And He understands. And uh, when the Holy Spirit prays, you know, what is His language? It is called groaning. <laughs> he groans with loud cries that no one understands. But that groaning is understood by the Father in heaven. Amen? Because He understands the Holy Spirit's language. You know why? Because... The Holy Spirit always, it says, always prays for, for believers. I like uh, in uh, uh, English Standard Version, saints. The Holy Spirit prays for the saints. And when he prays, he never contradicts God's will. Amen? He prays always according to his will, in harmony with God's will. So he knows how to pray, what to pray, and what is God's will for you, Keith, can be different than what is God's will for me. So he knows that, and then he prays accordingly. Let God's will, let's, we all will be done in Keith, you all will be done in Francis. He's, he prays in harmony with his God's will. But all that, you know, we... Uh, we can experience so that we will learn how do we how we respond to right, rightly to our sufferings uh, and and take those necessary steps directed by God. So that uh, the Holy Spirit's prayer become is it's like a custom made, and He gives that 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 the knowledge and the understanding how perhaps you should respond in your own situation. You know that may be going to a counselor that may be taking some medication or seeing a doctor or making some uh, uh, ch changes in your uh, eating habits or cultivating some new habits. So whatever that, the Holy Spirit can give you that understanding when you come to Him. So that is the mystery of the, uh, uh, the prayer here is that when we suffer, yes, the, the Holy Spirit prays for us, but it doesn't mean that we should not pray. Amen? We should also pray. As he prays, we also, we are commanded to pray. How many of you want to do God's will? Let me see you. How many of you want to do God's will? You know what God's will for you is? You pray without ceasing. Amen? Amen? So whenever you are doing, praying to God, you are doing God's will. God's will is for us. We are commanded to pray. And also, it is, it is God's, will, God's will for us that we come to pray uh, uh, in all circumstances. And that we will learn how to pray. That's one thing the disciples have asked Jesus to teach you. Now let me give you some examples of how the early Christians who uh, went through some tremendous suffering uh, responded in their own situations. For example, here, Paul and John, they, were, uh, they healed uh, a, a crippled beggar. Uh, they were, uh, and then they were imprisoned and because they were boldly speaking in the name of Jesus. Uh, and then healing the, of this beggar. And then they were warned, strictly saying that you're never going to speak about uh, God in the name of Jesus. And then upon, they threatened them, they, uh, they were released. I, loved, I love this passage here. Uh, and when they came back to 
to the church, uh, like Hope Church, and they gave a report in the, in the church, and it says here, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. Amen? Amen. So there is collective prayer when we pray to God collectively, you know, and because God has delivered them in that, from that situation. And after some time, John's brother was killed, James, his name. We read that in the book of Acts, 12th chapter. And uh, 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 James, how was he killed? He was killed by the sword. And then uh, Herod thought uh, he did a good thing because it pleased everybody. And then so he imprisoned Peter. Also, he wanted to put him to death in the same way. But then what happened? When Peter was in prison, what was the church doing? Are they having some barbecue party? No, it says they were earnestly prayed for Peter's release. Do you think God answered their prayers? Amen. Amen. He, they miraculously escaped. Now, do you know why we would pray for those who are suffering? This is how. God can send some help. So God is using not only Peter and others, they prayed for themselves, but the church is joining in praying for them. What about Paul and Silas? It was another beautiful example here. They were beaten up. It says they were beaten up by, by, uh, with wooden sticks. And they were thrown into the inner chamber or like very, like maybe solitary confinement or not a solitary because the other prisoners were there. But it was an inner chamber. They were guarding, uh, guarded heavily there. And then what happened? Again, it says, they themselves, Paul and Silas, they were praising God. God, thank you for these sufferings. How many of us will pray for that and thank God, right? They were praising God. They were singing hymns. Maybe like going up to the higher places. <laughs> well, when your feet are shackled up and your, your uh, hands are uh, bound and in the prison, maybe they're singing, we are going up to God. We're going up to the higher places, maybe. And it's again, there was a miraculous escape uh, from that. Dear friends, as we close, I want to ask you a question. Could suffering make you a saint? How so? Could it make you a saint? Well, it all depends on how you respond to it. Suffering could either make you a, a better follower of Christ or a, a wretched, miserable, bitter person on earth. It all comes to knowing how you should be responding to it. Say, if you respond to God and say, God, I am, I'm going through this because you have given this opportunity for me. You know, I tell you, dear friends, without mentioning names, there are many suffering saints in our church. They go through some tremendous emotional, mental, physical pain. And I wonder at times how they do that, how they, they, they maintain their, uh, their walk with God, they, their faith in God. They don't give up easily. And I know many who are lis listening to me in the live stream, there are many suffering saints that are there, out there. Uh, they, they're still loving the Lord, serving the Lord. And uh, they, we could learn from them. We could, we could uh, not only pray for them, but we could learn from them. Teach me how, how you are holding up. They might say, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit is helping me. The Holy Spirit is praying through me because it says the Holy Spirit always prays for the saints. The suffering saints, you are backed up by the power of the Holy Spirit 24-7. He'll pray for you and me. Do you say amen for that? Amen. He would not leave you in that. So he's the one who is lifting you up. So if you are going through any form of suffering, I don't know what that may be, take heart of what the Apostle Paul has given us, or uh, rather Apostle Peter. I want to close this with these words. Uh, the, the worship team, you may come forward. Uh, the beautiful encouragement that is given to us here in First Peter 4th chapter 12 to 13. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as something strange 
though there's something strange were happening to you. But rejoice. Rejoice is in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed with his glory is when his glory is revealed. Oh, what a, what a, that is my consolation in my suffering. There were times we don't know what we are going through when, we, when a lot of pain, pain is going on in your bodies, in my bodies. We cry out, we groan, we groan to God. When I had a surgery one time, it's so painful it was all I could do in, my, in the night, all the night through was to just to groan, groan that the Holy Spirit was interceding through me, helping me to overcome or be made whole. If I cannot be made whole on this earth, there is one for sh- a sure place for me to be healed is in the presence of God. That might be the time when I would be transported into his place. But that's the glory that is being awaited for us. You are sharing in the suffering of Christ. It's a hard fact to fathom, but it's the truth to understand. So then that makes you tomorrow, when you, whenever, whenever you go through some hardships, Lord, give me grace. Let the Holy Spirit intercede for us. Would you stand up together? When you are suffering, when you, whatever that may be, you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is praying for you, praying through you, and also the church is praying for you. And we are praying for one another. That's why you pray for me. I need your prayers as much as I pray for you so we all can be made whole together. John, lead us into...
Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and give praise to God. Our chains are gone and we are being set free forever. And our God who has forgiven us will be our God forever and forevermore. God, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that for you have sent the promise, the Holy Spirit to be in the world, to strengthen the church, to intercede for the saints. So here we are. Thank you for praying for us. Heal us, Lord, and set us free that we might continue to worship you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May now the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the ever abiding Holy Spirit will be with us forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And if you need some prayer, please come forward. We'll pray for you.